Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for me uh, to call upon for a very engaging panel discussion. And today they'll be discussing about the power of cricket. India's unparalleled passion for cricket is not just one amongst the viewers, but also amongst the brands. And that has something which has redefined the world of television advertising in India. As we await a highly anticipated Tata IPL 2022, we discuss with an esteemed panel of marketeers that have leveraged the Indian Premier League on broadcast, the power of associating with an event that is watched by 90% of TV households in India. Well, with a huge round of applause, uh, I welcome on the screen right now, Anita Kotwani, CEO of Kara India. We've got Girish Hingorani, the Senior General Manager and Head Marketing E-Commerce and Modern Trade Blue Star Limited. We've got Sumit Singh, CMO, InfoEdge India Limited, Nokri, 99 Acres, Jeevan Sathi, Shiksha and Nokri Gulf. We've got Vivek Srivasta, uh, Srivatsta, the uh, Head Marketing, Sales and Service Strategy, Tata Passenger Electric Mobility and the session chair for this panel discussion is going to be Vani Gupta Dandia, the independent uh, business consultant, uh, Cherry Peach Plum Growth. Well, with this, I'd like to humbly welcome all our panelists and thank you so much for giving us your valuable time and uh, welcome once again to our wonderful uh, forum of the fourth edition of TV First. Uh, Vani, over to you to take it forth with your panel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Bhavna. And uh, and welcome everyone, all of my panelists. You can all unmute yourselves, uh, Vivek, Girish, Anita, and Sumit. So, uh, so uh, you know, the first thing I want to say is that because we're talking about TV first and we're talking about the power of cricket, I think it's absolutely uh, without debate. One can talk about within cricket, IPL is the biggest property. And um, and IPL I hear is uh, is so large that apparently ninety percent of all TV households have uh, you know watch IPL in some way or the other and um, and it said of course IPL is an impact property it is expensive all right but the reason why brands still choose to be on IPL the reason why. Uh, it has the highest number of brands on any one property aggregating on IPL is because IPL gives you the benefit of impact and attention. So much so that they say that uh, IPL has over six and a half times the kind of attention that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that it gets uh, over and above any other uh, uh, top rated uh, program on TV. So Anita can help me with some of the numbers over here, but I want to open this floor to anyone uh, on how do they see IPL as being the powerful property that they would like to why why does I, IPL even feature in your media plans what do you see as the power of cricket and IPL specifically anyone okay so I can share my views uh, yes one. go ahead thank you Sumit. Uh, so I think uh, you know we've been asked a lot of times especially in the recent four or five years that most of our brands are all consumer internet, right? And right. a lot of our TG is actually digital. And then why would we use uh, a property like IPL? Absolutely. Because we are established in our verticals. We are leaders, right? So we don't have an awareness problem really that hmm. we're trying to uh, solve for. But I think there are two things. Uh, one is, of course, uh, for uh, a brand like 99 Acres, which we also have in our kitty, uh, the male audience is a very, very important audience and is the primary TG. And there is no other, uh, you know, program on TV that gives you this kind of reach. Hmm. You know? uh, secondly, uh, IPL, as you said, and we all know, is something that actually is not, you know, it's not a two week thing. It's It Correct. actually covers almost full two months of a year. Correct. Right? Uh, high impact, great reach. Cricket anyways has engaged audiences, right? Whether IPL or any other cricket series, we know that uh, nobody actually tunes out of a break. Yes. Right? You never know when the next over is going to start. So mm. there's uh, definitely more uh, attentive viewing and engagement. Mm. Uh, and we've kind of always come from this space that if we have leader brands, right, it is great to also, uh, you know, associate with a property that has a great equity because two Very nice. players that come together with good equity, it's a positive rub off. So those are Absolutely. some of the reasons that we kind of go for IPL. So you talked about the large audiences, you talked about uh, the power of IPL in being able to get large audiences together, also about uh, the equity rub off. 
Now, uh, since you are here, Sumit, and you took the bold step of starting first, I also want to ask you, uh, you also have Jeevan Sathi yes. on, uh, on IPL. And I would imagine Jeevan Sathi is a primarily female audience and you still chose to um, take the gamble with IPL. Would you think IPL is also big with female audiences? What was the discussion internally? So uh, we started it off as a pilot, right? Hmm. We always knew that uh, cricket is not big with women, right? Right. And uh, we as a brand are constantly riding on general entertainment movies, which are genres where you find more female eyeballs. Uh, but the pilot was successful. We took the Hindi uh, language uh, stream for the North. Um, and we realized that uh, though obviously the number of females that you can reach out to via G GEC or cricket, there is a difference, but there was a difference in the quality of eyeballs. Hmm. So a little bit more Metro audiences, you know, hmm. females from metros. We also, hmm. when we went and spoke to us, you know, a lot of females who maybe came onto the platform during that hmm. period, uh, we also felt that uh, there were, it was attracting eyeballs on TV of females who usually are not watching anything else on TV. Right, wow. so you could okay. reach out to them maybe through other digital platforms, but they chose to kind of uh, watch uh, IPL matches while maybe TV is not their mainstay of entertainment any longer. So those are some of the things that we felt. Uh, so numbers are not large, but there's quality there, which is a little different. And I'm surprised you're talking about quality, Sumit, because one of the uh, popular misconceptions, uh, and I don't know if it's actually true, and you tell me about this, is that because India has mostly single TV households, a lot of the female viewership is passive viewership. In the studies that you did subsequently, did you feel that that was true? Did you feel that your, that your uh, advertising was still being consumed in the way that you would have liked it to be consumed since you talked about quality of eyeballs? So when we, uh, so if I look at two age groups, you know, one right. being the secondary or the influencer TG for us, which is parents, because parents is who start, you know, mm -hmm. the pressure of getting married, right? So they right. also become very important as right. a secondary TG. So uh, we thought a lot of mothers, for example, were uh, viewing IPL for the same reasons as you stated. And I think uh, when we talk to fathers, they are on serials for the same reasons as you stated, right? Right, okay. Uh, but we went, when we spoke to younger profiles, mm -hmm. right? And when we take IPL, we for the last two years started taking the entire piece, which is the connected households as well as TV, right? Both mm -hmm. of them, because then you're covering everything. There is fragmentation. Mm -hmm. We felt that they were profiles mm -hmm. um, that were actually watching this on TV, not necessarily because of a single household, Right? right, because they came from metros. Mostly, the NCCS A2 households in metros no longer are single uh, TV households, right? Uh, and that is more RTG, right? So we kind of did not experience this that they were a passive audience. We actually, the in the younger profile, it seemed to be a very very active audience, an audience that knew about players, was playing cricket games on all the apps and betting on the apps, etc. So all that I thought we saw. So in the younger TG, it was not passive. Yes. In the TG where we kind of had mothers engage, we did feel that they were uh, more passive rather than active and watching it because the family is watching it, and, you know. If I may come in here just to kind of contextualize the viewership angle of females, yes, please. it really was like uh, Samit said, the younger audience did come in well. So when we did a cut on 18 to, uh, let's say the, uh, you know, 35 kind of number or 25 kind of number, you had more than 50% actually watching it but 88 percent in the 18 to 39 actually landed up watching IPL which is and out of that if you look at the numbers 50 percent were watching most of the matches which is literally half of them watching practically half of the tournament and if if the, if the overall number was sitting at 200 million which is what we were looking at in terms of female viewership it actually if you combine that it's 27 percent higher than the top five GEC channels so there is momentum on, uh, you know, the females watching it. Uh, even on brand lift studies, when we've looked at, uh, you know, and we did some uh, research work on it, they had 50% higher recalls. They were aware of the brands that were there on IPL. They were, the, they were aware of the sponsors who were sponsoring the tournament. So I think the larger play around kids and females and the fact that they've really drawn in a lot of other audiences into uh, the sport is very, very visible. 
may have not been there a few years back, but the numbers today are absolutely promising to figure out that this, this, this works across all segments. Fantastic. Those are very, very large numbers, Anita. And this was very enlightening. So you said 88% viewership amongst a very large age band, you said. More than 50% were watching most of the matches. You said um, in brand lift studies, more than 50% had high recall for most of the ads. But tell me something. Over the years, IPL has become one of the most coveted properties for all advertisers, marketers. And there is a rapid increase in the number of brands that now advertise on IPL. Wouldn't the concern for any marketer also be that if I don't have a whole lot of money and if I am not able to get a whole number of spots, then chances are that I will get lost in all of this clutter. Because there are, I mean, how many brands do we have on IPL today? Do we have, I would safely assume there'd be more than 100 brands on IPL today. 133. And uh, 133 motors which has a whole lot of money and can afford to be the big the big sponsors what does one do so, so Vani, do... may i take that yes go ahead so we, we've been on ipl since 2008 and you're right about the fact that we've not uh, you know at that time there was just 28 brands on ipl when we entered the first edition we didn't know how it would pan out and things like that and we're still on ipl even in the last edition that happened in 2021. And you're right about the fact that the number of matches that we could afford then, uh, and despite our increased budgets, the number of matches that we can afford now are far lower. So this is indeed a concern that, you know, the clutter is, uh, you know, getting there. But having said that, I think if we have good creative communication, if our planning is a little more intelligent and, you know, the commercial duration, we've realized that, you know, on IPL, maybe a shorter ACD works better because, you know, the objective is more about recall rather than telling a story as well at times, then you can integrate all your objectives even with the uh, high clutter. And given the fact that, you know, there is no live event right now on television, which is as big as the IPL. And of course, for a brand like Blue Star, it comes in the peak of our season, which is the air conditioning, uh, you know, peak. Yes, so obviously yes, it makes real yes. sense for us to be on IPL. We started in 2008 and we haven't lost out ever since. We've been on every edition of IPL since then. So obviously that just shows we're still there. Of course, the concern of clutter is there, but we're trying our best to ensure that our creative communication stands up. Of that Fantastic. Thing. Very valuable point made, Girish. So you talked about, uh, uh, yes, the number of matches one can afford is lower. However, the quality of the creative is very important. Go for shorter ACD. Don't target, don't look at brand communication. Think about brand recall instead. So make sure that you are able to stick in the mind, make sure that you have, uh, you know, an intelligent ad that allows people to remember. So that's very, very valuable. In fact, on this, I remember um, Anita also has a strong point of view on how you can break through the clutter. But before that, I'd like to pull in Vivek uh, into this discussion. Vivek, tell us what, what was your uh, primary driver? Why did you even look at IPL? as being one of your largest investments. Yeah. Thank you, Vani. So, um, you know, just uh, latching on to the points made by the other panelists, you know, in terms of reach, in terms of it becoming a complete media roadblock, um, the kind of uh, homogeneous reach it gives in terms of geographies and demographies uh, made a lot of sense. But for us specifically as a business, um, you know, it, it provided a platform for us to have a you know a multiple multi-year launch plan you know mm. we had a series of new launches coming up uh, and uh, we could time it usually automotive launches are not more than one uh, in a year and we could use this opportunity uh, as we inter internally call it a firecracker approach where you have you know every year a new launch and uh, you time it around the IPL so that you get a really strong uh, launch pad for each of the new brands that we've launched that made sense. Obviously, we've uh, while the discussion today is largely about media, we've uh, kind of approached IPL in a, uh, yeah, I would say, multimedia manner. So not only are we go, uh, are we there on TV uh, over the air, but we are also on ground sponsors. We have the car displayed on the ground. We have several player tie-ups on digital. We have a lot of crowd engagement activities as well. So as a whole, uh, all this work very well together. Obviously, we'll have to kind of orchestrate each of these activities so that, you know, they don't seem dissociated from each other, but each of them add, adds to the overall impact. 
and it's been working well for us. We've been associated with IPL since 2018 and continue to do so this year and probably next year as well. And uh, happy to say that all the every single brand that we've launched through the IPL have uh, gone on to become very, very successful. So tell me, Vivek, when you spent as much money on a single property, this is one of your largest, uh, you know, one of your largest media spends. Tell me, and you're doing this since 2018. Internally, how do you evaluate whether this property is working, not working. I know you just mentioned that you've used it as a launch pad for several brands. All of those brands have gone on to become very successful. But if you were to plow the same amount of money on, uh, you know, on a on a broad spectrum media, media plan, otherwise, did you ever have this? I'm sure you would have had this debate internally as to why does it make sense to partner with IPL year after year? Why do you all together feel this this money is worth spending? So it, it was a debate, uh, debate, in fact, for the first two years, but subsequently it was a proven case. But in the first two years, it was a little bit of a leap of faith. Uh, and uh, that's when Star came on board uh, initially. And um, apart from the numbers and, you know, anticipatory numbers, I would say, thrown up by a media agency, uh, what really worked for us was uh, Star got into a, a lot of regional programming, you know, mm. uh, where we could get really high quality inroads into regional markets, specifically the south of India. And, uh, you know, they went so far in as, uh, you know, uh, curating specific uh, uh, interview, uh, I mean, commentator panels, as well as uh, even the feeds, you know, the match feeds were different for these regions. And we thought that really makes sense. You know, any kind of uh, um, traditional media wouldn't give that quality and that intensity of reach into the regional market. So that made a lot of sense. Uh, but in, in the end, in the first year, uh, when you're going to spend this kind of money, uh, it was a bit of a leap of faith. The numbers mm -hmm. uh, five years back were not as attractive as they are now. And mm -hmm. we took a calculated call. What helped was, uh, anyways, um, for a product launch, we spend a big uh, bubble right up front in terms of a launch. And it was just about a choice of medium rather than specific investment into IPL. You know? So that made it a little easier. To some extent, tongue in cheek, I can say that, uh, you know, the, the gun was on my head, you know, in terms of making it a success or not. The money was there. So if I had to put it in the right place and I took I took a leap of faith and hopefully it, uh, and it it's worked. worth it. And it's yeah. worth it. Fantastic. You talked about regional programming. I want to pull in Anita over here. Anita, tell me a little about how can advertisers, marketers use the might of IPL with uh, you know, regional programming, the fact that uh, now IPL has, uh, you know, commentators by markets, one can get regional feeds, one can get different language fields, fee, uh, feeds. Has this been, um, you know, an important aspect of brands being able to uh, partner even for specific geographies? Yeah, Vani, I think it takes into account two things, right? One is I am a regional player and I don't really want a national presence. So how can I efficiently spend the money that I am I'm putting onto the spot? So it works in for those local advertisers into mm. specific markets at one level to mm. ride on a property which is that massive in nature, but it's restricted to their geography and hence he's still seen as a larger player in that, uh, in that market. Mm -hmm. The other way for, let's say, portfolio of brands, which really focus from a market prioritization standpoint, whether South is an important market or West Bengal is an important market or Maharashtra is an important market, then the regional feeds really, really help on two counts. I may be present at an overall level, but I may want to bum up certain of my inventory for specific markets with some additional investments as well. Mm -hmm. The other part is I can actually redivide my creatives as well. So if I know, let's say, uh, a particular brand is very strong in a South market, these are with something else that's strong in an, let's say, in an AP market, I can have two different communications, two different brands itself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, coming onto it. So mm -hmm. I think the, the, the way the network has thought through the flexibility of the deals, mm -hmm. right up from SD to HD to regional to premium to markets, it's actually this mega cast of multiple feeds and you have the opportunity to plug and play what really works for you as an advertiser. And then they package that for you. I think that's the beauty about the way they've kind of structured the entire piece. Fantastic. Since you mentioned HD, um, Sumit, 
have you ever, uh, I would have imagined you certainly would have had this as part of your media plan. How do you look at the HD feed? Um, you know, did you ever do a media plan that specifically only talked to the HD audiences and how did that do for you? You know, like uh, Girish said, he actually started uh, with the first season. I still remember the meeting we had uh, when IPL started, it was with the Sony team. And we just found it very risky because we felt, you know, the numbers they're quoting and all. And we were very heavy on cricket. So mm -hmm. for Nokri at that time, you know, and 99 Acres, it was, you know, we used to do a lot of cricket and mostly mm -hmm. all the famous and uh, teams playing in India. Mm -hmm. And we kind of felt, no, this is too much money, you know, etc. But of course, the, uh, you know, I mean, the tournament was not at all as large as it is today, but it did very well, right? Mm -hmm. So it was um, year three season three that we actually got on okay. uh, and um, that was also just after the financial meltdown companies were coming out in 2008 because 2008 Q3 onwards there was a meltdown so 2010 yeah. 11 is when we went and the first thing we did was we actually went with HD hmm. for 99 acres hmm. uh, because we felt it was the right audience you know and also it was affordability you know, because uh, we did not want to kind of promise such a big outlay yeah, for yeah, SD plus HD. Yeah. We were not very sure yeah. how it will work, but it did wonders. We had great impact, you know, just going on the HD feed. Mm -hmm. And for two years, we actually rode only on the HD feed. Mm -hmm. And then we went on to actually um, the holistic, you know, the SD plus HD feed. So it, uh, uh, for brands uh, which are actually uh, targeting premium audiences, at that time, more male than female. Um, I think HD worked very well mm -hmm. because it was also the same time where people were moving into smart TVs, HD TVs. Yes, yes, smart, yes, yes. HD very TV. well said. Yes, we're absolutely. all upgrading our Tata Sky, you know, yeah. boxes to HD boxes. Yeah. So I think both things went well, and therefore viewership was growing on HD as well. Yeah. But as marketeers, it was a bet because numbers were not there. Right? Yes, and exactly. Were barely there. I yes, agree. and that brings me to my next question. I wanted to bring in Anita and uh, feel free anybody who wants to join in. You know, when I was um, at Pepsi, a lot of times we used to have this discussion. Yes, IPL is a huge impact property. It is. But how does one measure impact and attention? I know everybody is watching IPL, but it's it's a huge outlay. You know, Sumit talked about managing monies uh, between HD and ST, and a lot of the HD decisions are also guided by affordability. So what does one do over here? Anita, as a media planner, we used to have this discussion, ha, impact hai, lekin kitna impact hai? You know, kitne, kitne paise denge iske? So, Vani, you picked up one data point, I think, initially when you started, 60% mm. higher yes. viewer yes. attraction and yes. the quality of Attention. reach on this yes. property, right? Yes. The second part is really about if you want to build memory structures, this is this is the impact property that actually lands up doing there. Mm. So, mm. typically, when you do research and you look at DK of advertising in terms of messaging and communication, this particular cricket, uh, specifically in India, because it is religion, it works the best. So the longevity of the base awareness in your consumer's mind stays longer when you're associated with a sport like IPL compared to any of the other GC or fiction shows. Mm -hmm. So all your noticeability studies, the fact that when you do an on-air, on-ground component of the sport itself, all the 10 years of research pieces that you would have read about a lot of the IPL studies that came out working in for brand advertiser A, B, or C. It just showed you the delta. Mm -hmm. I think the other important part, which we all really need to realize, all these players, whether you take the gaming category, you take the crypto guys today that are there, you take the yeah. telecom guys, or even e-commerce themselves, if it wasn't that big, they would have not been there. Yes, they true. are there on this medium through and through because it delivers. It delivers right. uh, you know, their business KPIs, it delivers their awareness targets, it drives the downloads that they're looking at. And it's, it, if they're repeating it year on year and it is massive investment, even if you don't know the numbers, maybe they're not really sharing the larger numbers for you, but on every case study presentation, you will see the Delta numbers on KPI deliveries. And that is why this attraction to the spot. Very nice. And in fact, you know, to that point, it's not just the big guys who we know have shitloads of money. It's even a lot of the new age internet brands that are choosing 
to launch on this platform. So obviously they are seeing the value of this platform. Now in that context, Anita, tell me what kind of media innovations can one look at? And I'd love to hear from Vivek and uh, Girish as well. In terms of the ad formats, you know, apart from a 30 second TVC, what else? Agrish talked about a, a shorter ECD, and I'm a great fan of shorter ECD. I say this to all my clients, we should do 20 seconds or lesser. But apart from that, tell me what kind of media formats can one look at in terms of innovations? We have young clients who don't have bags of money, but recognize the power of IPL. What do they do? How, how can they be on this platform with a smaller kitty of money? So I think I think the way uh, you know the smaller brands, or even the brands who are currently today sponsoring that event, have very interestingly contextualized uh, you know their communication. Hmm. Whether it is through long format, short format content, whether it is through Aston bands and squeezed ups, whether it is through contextual pieces. Take an example of Swiggy. He wanted to hmm. talk about delivery, and he took the fastest delivery of the match coming in and contextualizing it beautifully for linking it to the product benefit and proposition. I think I'm going to leave it more to Girish and, uh, you know, uh, Vivek and team to talk about it because as advertisers, they have used it in very, very interesting and innovative uh, ways and over to them to kind of add the flavor of the innovations that they have done on their businesses. So we've, thank you, thank you thank so you. much. And we've not had really shit loads of money in that sense to you know, <laughs> invest like bigger brands on IPL or on cricket. Uh, but but our experiences have been that, you know, if you can innovate and like Anita said, if you contextualize, it does make a big difference to give you an idea. Uh, we like just like Sumit mentioned, we've been on cricket since 2001 and we were pretty strong on cricket. We spend over 60 percent of our television budgets on cricket because we believe that there's a great connect and great association there. But having said that, you know, we don't have that kind of money to invest in cricket like so many other big brands. And therefore, we chose a route of a weather report in the 2003 World Cup, mm. where, you know, there was a weather report. People used to watch the weather report. It was quite an event by itself. Mm. And, you know, how the weather is going to look like. Is it going to rain or, you know, things like that. That helped us. And even as recent as when we launched our water purifier business, uh, you know, we didn't really have that kind of budgets that the air conditioning business would have. And therefore, we kind of created a drinks break. Mm. So uh, whenever the drinks break happened and water purifiers, we had... You know, we had children in our ads and we had a five second ACD, just five seconds, just Fantastic. reminding in every drinks break Fantastic. about the kid and, you know, go have a drinks break or water purifier. So get purity. So things like that will make an impact is what we believe. Like I said, it's all about creativity and you have Harsha and Kenaz joining in later. And, you know, they've also helped us in the journey to kind of break clutter and get there. It's not about the money always. It's about how, what impact you can make. And creativity, Fantastic. in my mind, stands up. Right yeah, there. and I remember Sumit, you were uh, talking to us earlier. Tell us about that uh, what you did with Nokri way back. I thought that was very cool. So uh, I think right from 2003, and we did that on the 2007 World Cup. I think it was six or seven when the six was Champions Trophy, and I think seven was World Cup. So what we did for Nokri at that time was we had the same problem. We didn't have enough outlays to kind of build the right frequency because you also need the right frequency per match, right? Correct. Correct. Um, but we always rode on cricket from when we started TV, which was 2002, 2003. Uh, and we actually started TV just because of lawn tennis and cricket. We never had a TVC. Hmm. We would just buy bands and squeeze ups or, you know, hmm. things like that because we did not have a TVC. Um, but what we did was we innovated with the CV. So every time right. a batsman would go out and a new batsman would come from the you know uh, pavilion, his CV, because Nokri is about jobs and right. CVs, so right. we would kind of display all the information um, of the player in the format of a CV. And that Fantastic. was a very contextual uh, kind of a thing. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a great way of standing out. I mean, it's such an enduring way. I mean, you, yeah, yeah. I mean versus doing a 30-second TVC. It's such a simple device and so intelligently done. Fantastic. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and over here I'd like to pull in uh, Vivek again. Vivek, you know, now we've got uh, uh, two new teams, UP and Gujarat. And uh, these, by the way, even population-wise are huge markets. I would imagine this in itself throws open a very huge opportunity to marketers to be able to reach these audiences because there would be a lot more interest from these states, from these markets to now, uh, you know, participate in uh, IPL. I mean, I, I would imagine IPL viewership numbers should go up 
uh, in these states with the introduction of these two uh, teams. What does this mean for you? Yeah, uh, firstly, I think big opportunity to get really deep into these uh, markets, but they come with uh, certain challenges. You know, you, uh, I think the teams have been completely reshuffled uh, this year. Uh, so it's a little bit of a unknown entity in terms of how the emotional um, connects are going to go. And also uh, you have eight odd mature teams where you have a mature audience who have been following these teams for more than a decade. And you have a couple of new markets which are just warming up to the idea of IPL. So it's not going to be very straightforward. I think we need to probably look at it as uh, two different, uh, uh, you know, two different problems at hand is what I would advise. We are not going to use the same yardstick across all the all these teams and all these uh, markets. I would say, um, and um, these two, uh, you know, the two new mar markets as well, Gujarat and UP are extremely, uh, I would say specific markets you know they prefer certain kind of communication they they like certain kind of brands so i think the uh, marketers have to make a very informed choice on how to utilize this opportunity to the max and not just apply the same rule to these two new markets as well anita do you think the opening up of these two teams would actually uh, offer an opportunity to regional brands to participate in ipl in a much bigger way so I do feel, uh, for example, UP as a market usually has been considered like a media dark market, relatively lower uh, kind of a market to kind of Especially get impact mm -hmm. out, right? So from that angle, whether the numbers are going to really throw up in a big way, uh, one would try and evaluate and see what's happening in that market. I think comparatively, uh, Gujarat would possibly definitely fare much better because anyways, the, the Hindi belt uh, set will have a whole host of people who was, must be watching and, you know, uh, numbers on Gujarat market for IPL will be far, far better, are already there even today as we speak. Mm -hmm. So my between the two, if I had to punt on numbers and which will possibly do better uh, would be Gujarat visa vis UP. Mm -hmm. uh, UP itself, uh, because of uh, the size of the market, uh, the relative number that will then kind of come in may show you percentage wise lower numbers. But yeah, the population size of that market is humongous. So if it takes on in a big way, if there are specific um, ideas that broadcasters are going to be looking at, I don't know whether Bojpuri could be an interesting way of trying to get a commentary going. I have no clue. How are they going to use those people of that market in an interesting manner? Uh, how are they amplifying and ramping that up? So for example, previously when IPL used to happen, those cities which really did not do very, very well, you did the IPL fan parks, et cetera, and all of that to get the excitement going in the market. Mm -hmm. With the COVID situation, etc., those are also areas which are restricted in nature. So how do you kind of evangelize the sport in that two states? I think both the teams uh, which have taken up the challenge of a, you know, buying out the teams will obviously want to ensure that, you know, people start uh, resonating with their team and team members. Very nice. I have a point of view to add, yes. point, uh, which yes, is that please. I feel technically, you know, we might assume that in a particular state, uh, people would support that particular city or that particular state, but it need not be. You know, for mm. example, at one point of time in Mumbai, KKR had a much larger larger audience in Mumbai, and we saw that in all the ratings uh, that you know KKR match would have much larger viewership than Mumbai matches in Mumbai. Wow! Right? So it cuts wow. across states because it's all about the leader, it's about the captain and how he takes along. So, for yeah. example, Virat Kohli and Bangalore has a very high rating in Delhi. For example, yeah, right? my son and, you know, so it cuts point. across geography. So for me, I think it's not about UP Gujarat. It's about the leaders of UP Gujarat, the kind of fan following they have. Of yeah. course, the local radio channels kind of create that fan of, you know, of your own city and your own state. And they kind of popularize that. But my theory is IPL cuts across geographies. You could be a fan of KKR sitting in Mumbai and you wouldn't care whether Mumbai wins or not. You That's want true. Sort of Ganguly to win, you know, in that sense. In, yeah, in that yeah. yeah, I was saying that that in my house, it's uh, between my son and I, we always root for the Bangalore team. Exactly. Yes, I'm sitting in Bombay and I always root for Mumbai Indians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, back to you. Uh, 
Girish, I wanted to ask you, apart from consumers, as we traditionally, of course, we look at all media primarily for the consumption of consumers, but our dealers, like for me, when I was on Kurkuri, I used to always say that it's actually sales that determines whether your brand is going to be a success or not. Consumer is a lot easier to handle. So do you also look at IPL as a property that helps you uh, garner greater trade partner support? You're right about the fact that, you know, it's the channel yeah. partners who would finally need to first uh, invest in your product, uh, you know, before it reaches out to the consumers, if you're not Correct. able to crack the channel. So that that's a huge, uh, you know, kind of uh, filter in our mind whenever we're doing media planning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fortunately, or, you know, sometimes IPL begins in March. And that's where it helps us because, you know, it helps that, you know, a pickup of the inventory of the products because consumer dealers, then channel partners believe that they'll be pulled for the brand. Mm -hmm. But when IPL begins sometime in April, then it gets a little too late, but it helps the Delhi markets or the North markets. Mm -hmm. So you're right about the fact that IPL as a property or cricket as a property, when you associate with it, mm -hmm. it gets you a lot of premiumness because it's only the premium brands technically mm -hmm. who can associate with cricket. That's the kind of perception we've seen across consumers, right? Mm -hmm. So it gets you there and B, it, it has a huge impact on channel partners, their mm -hmm. uh, you know assessment of if you're advertising in cricket and specifically the IPL during the summer season, I'm likely to have a better ROI on Blue Star products because there will be more pull for the brand. There'll be more counter share. So obviously that is something that we consider. So it's not only about consumers, it's even channel partners who are a big uh, decision, uh, you know, uh, a big kind of uh, you know factor in our decision making. Mm, very nice. And the other important point that you made also was that uh, the kind of property you associate with is also... Um, you know, an indicator of your stature. It also builds stature, right? Just exactly. being on IPL in itself is a great, um, you know, strut. Is that you've arrived? You know, it's like you know, it's point like, with great partners correct. to be able to say, "Well, we are on IPL." It suddenly lifts you as a brand, and it gives a lot of confidence to the trade partners. Absolutely. You also talked about premium brands. On that, I want to ask uh, uh, Vivek. Uh, Tata Safari was launched on IPL. Is that right, Vivek? That's right, yeah. And, uh, and what was your uh, experience of that? Do you think uh, IPL would be a, you, a, you as an advertiser and marketer, would you advocate that IPL be considered an important part of the mix for premium brand launches? For sure. I think, uh, uh, you know, the definition of premium uh, can vary, but uh, <laughs> yes. if I have to just rephrase it slightly, um, you know, I think just being present on IPL does uh, lend a lot of gravitas to your organization, uh, and uh, both from a dealer standpoint, but more importantly from a customer standpoint. I think. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in fact, uh, in internal debates, uh, I can share it here. But um, we see the future of IPL going, in fact, the Super Bowl way, where uh, you know, it's not about what you advertise it. The news that you're going to be in Super Bowl itself yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It actually uh, lends a lot of power yes. to your brand. You know, yes. So I, the day is not going to be far. Uh, I'm sure very soon uh, in the coming years, I feel is going to be out of our budgets and uh, there's going to be new uh, ways to be present there. Um, but to answer your question very specifically, I think uh, being in IPL, does help from a consumer point and if your product is premium by itself uh, you have uh, i would say a much more enhanced chance of making it successful fantastic so on that note yep. i think we can close we're already above time there is not just being on ipl just the news that i'm going to be on ipl is in itself news enough Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, E4M team, uh, do we have time for any more or would you recommend we close since we were supposed to close at 2.50? Sure. No, no, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Mani, for uh, moderating this session so wonderfully. Absolutely glued to the screen throughout and such great insights uh, garnered from all our panelists. So thank you once again. Thank you okay. so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye.